This video will go over the bishop's opening, which is e4, e5, and bishop c4. Now, the move bishop c4 on leeches.org is around eight times less common than the move knight f3. However, just because it's rare does not mean it's not good. And in this video, you'll see how to use this opening and get some very aggressive games and some very nice wins. We will look at the most common main lines that you will get, which are the moves knight to c6, knight to f6, and bishop to c5. Let's start with bishop c5. The thing to notice about this opening is that it's very flexible. You can always transition and transpose into more common lines. And so knight f3 here and knight to c6, and suddenly we're in a much more familiar territory. Um, or similarly, if you play the Vienna a lot and you're comfortable in those positions, you can play the move knight to c3 here and transpose into uh, you know, familiar territory for you. And so the point that I'm making is that the move bishop to c4 is a very flexible move and you can always transpose into more familiar lines. However, you can also play more aggressive moves that you wouldn't be able to play if you started with the move knight f3, for example. And so here the move d4 is one of those moves. Now after the move d4, if they were to take with the pawn, one of the huge benefits of playing the move bishop to c4 so quickly is that you immediately have pressure on f7. So the move bishop takes f7 already um, lands you in a, in a really nice position because their king is misplaced, it can't castle, and it's not very safe here. And also this pawn is quite weak and you have very easy development and you can castle. And so already you can see the power of this bishop. And if they were to take with the bishop instead, well, you've gambited a pawn, but in exchange, you're going to get very nice development. So you can continue knight to f3. They can defend knight to c6. And now, well, immediately, if you want, you can take the bishop. And after a move like knight to d4, you can play bishop to e3. And, you know, you can make a claim here that the fact that you have, um, you know, these two bishops and the fact uh, that you have very quick development and that you can castle very quickly... Um, make it so that gambit that you did, um, you know, you have compensation for it. And so, you know, for example, if they were to play b6, you can go queen to g4 and immediately start to attack. And after queen to f6, knight to d5 is already, um, you know, going to leave uh, some serious damage for black here. And so the point is, it's very easy for black to mess up, because even though they're up a pawn, you have two bishops and very nice development. And so that's one uh, thing that you can do. But if you don't want to, you don't have to take the bishop. You can also castle. And um, the added bonus of castling is that if they were to allow it, you always have extra flexibility. Specifically, you can play the move knight to g5. And so there are cases where knight to g5 is something you would like to play. But if you very quickly trade before you were to castle, then you don't get that opportunity. Um, and, and you can always, of course, also... Um, take here. And so, for example, if they were to play knight of six, well, then you can simply take and we get into a very similar um, situation where you're still down a pawn, but that extra development is going to really help you out here. And if they were to take with the e pawn, then you can play the move e5, and it's suddenly very tricky for black. If they move knight to g8, then the move queen to h5 is crushing here, and after g6, queen to f3, they have these dark square weaknesses, there's pressure on f7, um, and you can always, you know, get more pieces into the attack. And if instead, uh, you know, they were to move, for example, knight to e4, then suddenly queen to g4 comes, and, you know, you have pressure everywhere here. And so, again, you can see that common idea that you're down a pawn here, um, but in this gambit you have extra development, and you're always the one initiating attacks, and, you know, your king's super safe, their king is not, and it's really fun to be on this side of the attack um, because even though you're down material, you can just continue throwing pieces at them and, and continuing to add more pressure, and very often that will uh, not be good for them. And so that's, you know, one way that you can take this. You can go ahead and give up a pawn on d4, and, well, if they were to take with this pawn, that's, of course, very easily crushing, like I showed, and if they take with here, you land into this kind of gambit position where you're down a pawn, but you have very quick development to show for it. Um, but let's move on to what happens if they start with knight to c6, for example. Well, 
the move knight to c6, it gives you a nice opportunity to play the move knight to c3. So again, you can play knight f3 if you want, and once again, transpose into very common territory, but one of the benefits of not playing knight f3 so quickly and delaying that move with the move bishop to c4 is that you can always play the move f4. And so here, an opportunity that you typically might not get is you can play the move knight to c3 instead. And now, you know, let's say they play knight f6, you can play the move d3 and launch an attack with f4. And again, if you were to very quickly play the move knight f3 um, after e4, e5, knight f3, you would never get this chance. And so here, let's say they play the move d6, you can play f4, they play bishop to e7, now you play knight f3, they castle, you castle, and you just have really a very just beautiful position here. For example, if they were to take, then your bishop gets developed really smoothly and nicely. If they were to instead play the move bishop to g4, pinning your knight, then you go h3, and after bishop to h5, you have g4, and you can end up trapping the bishop, or if they were to take, this is not scary because you can play queen to d2, your knight is nicely secured, and you can swing the queen over here, um, and you might actually have an attack in that position. And then, uh, you know, finally, if they don't do any of these moves, let's say they play a random move, you can play the move f5, and if you want, you can also lock up the position. That's another way, uh, another benefit of having the pawn on f4. You can play f5 and stop them from bringing resources uh, to defend the attack and actually also helping you to add resources. So you're kind of locking up the position in a way that you have a lot of material that you can use here to attack. You know, so queen can come to g3, the knight could come here with the bishop as well, the bishop could sacrifice with the queen. You just have a lot of methods to attack here uh, because you're blocking their defenses, and again, you're allowing your, your attacks to continue. And so uh, the point that I'm showing here is that delaying the move knight f3 is also something that you should understand that you're doing and something that you can use by playing knight to c3. Um, but otherwise, knight f3 is completely fine and you get into a more standard position. And then finally, let's look at what happens with knight f6. With the move knight f6, again, you always have that flexibility. If you want, you can play knight to c3, for example, and ultimately transpose into a much more familiar position. And this is totally fine. If you want to play like this, go for it. However, I also want to provide an alternative that is more unique to this opening, which is the move d4, super aggressive. Now, if they were to take the e4 pawn with their knight, then you take this pawn here, and the knight, A, you've just gotten rid of some of the key retreating squares the knight might want to utilize, and also you're setting up a nice little idea. If they were to ignore this idea, say play the move knight to c6, you can take here and then hit them with this fork. Again, this bishop that you place on c4 so quickly, it always pressures f7. Always look for these tactics. Because here, after uh, these moves, you have a great position. The king can never castle. It's going to be stranded here in the center. You always have the ability to attack it. And, you know, you can develop super easily your pieces and, and then castle. And so that would be a great uh, position for you. And then if they play a move like knight to c5 here, let's say, trying to meet the move bishop takes f7 and queen to d5 with the move knight to e6. This is not something you should do because knight to e6 is actually a really powerful move. It stops the check and keeps the knight safe. Well, in that case, you can simply play the move bishop to e3 and very simply develop. Um, and what you're going to see here is that you have a really crushing position. So after they were to castle here, you go rook d1, bringing more pieces into the game. You can eventually castle. And now you start to launch an attack because of this extra development you have and all of this space that you have. You can just visually see that white um, is playing with more space and more development than black is. And, and that will show tactically here as well in a second with the move knight to g5, for example, where if they were to take, this f7 uh, square is just completely um, getting destroyed. And so, uh, you know, you can see here that um, with this opening, you're very often going to have more space and more development. And so even if they end up saving their knight here, um, you have a great position. So what if instead they take um, 
with the e pawn, the d4 square, the d4 pawn. Well, you can continue here. You can take it with the queen. The only issue with this, however, is that after the move knight to c6, you lose some tempo, which is why I recommend instead going knight to f3 and then wanting to take this pawn with the knight instead. And if they allow you to do that, well, great. You can you know continue developing um, and castle, get your rook centralized. You have a great position. If they were to pressure you and, and play a move like knight to e4, suddenly you can even take with the queen this time because their knight is going to be attacked, so you're the one uh, winning tempo. Um, and there's some really cool lines here. For example, knight to d6, you can castle. They take rook to e1 check. They block, you take over here on g7 um, and pressure their rook. And then you bring your bishop into the game. And again, there's that common theme of you just have so much development um, and, and such an aggressive position, it's just really hard for black to play here. And if they were to simply play the move knight f6, the better option here, well, then you can continue developing and, you know, you can castle at some point, develop your pieces, and once again, you have still a really nice position and always you have this pressure on f7. So here you can see the sacrifice and then you win back the material, the king can castle, and you have super good development, maybe this f-pawn rushing down the board later on. So overall, you can see that this opening is a really strong pick for a number of reasons. A, you can always transpose into more familiar positions and more common openings, but B, you always have these extra aggressive ideas, um, specifically targeting f7 most of the times, where you you might be giving up a pawn or a couple of uh, pieces even, but you have so much uh, extra development, extra space, that it's definitely compensated, and you have just a really nice attack. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down below any other video requests you guys have. Subscribe if you're new around here. Like this video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.